Okay, this is a tutorial for DJs, and I'm going to kind of give you some ideas on organizing your files for DJ sets, um, how to save space on your hard drive, and a little bit about how Ableton works with MP3s and how to make that work in your favor. Um, first thing that I would recommend to any DJ is to get an external USB or FireWire hard drive um, and put all of your files on the external hard drive instead of using the internal. It's going to do a couple things. It's, it's going to obviously make your computer run more efficient, more efficiently because it's not relying on so much of the hard drive space on the main drive. Um, when too much uh, information is put on that drive or that drive has not that much free space, it's not going to run as efficiently. So that's one reason to do it. Another reason is just that uh, you'll be surprised how fast your C drive is going to fill up and at some point Ableton's going to stop letting you decode songs. So you're going to have a limit of songs that you can use and, and nothing else. So highly recommend an external hard drive uh, for this process. So the first thing that I should show you uh, in setting up to organize your songs is you should set up first, I'm going into my options and preferences. In Apple, it should be Apple preferences. And I'm going into file folder section right here. Once I'm in there, you're going to take a look at this temporary file. Now, the reason I'm taking you here is because what a lot of people don't know is if you're DJing with MP3s, Ableton's not actually using those MP3s uh, in, in the song file. It's actually converting the MP3s to WAV and then saving those WAVs in a temporary folder. And it defaults to a folder on your C drive. And I will show you where that C drive is. But you could always look in here and it will tell you uh, the location at least for Mac. I'm on a PC right now, so I'm just going to show you where that folder is from this point of view. So I've got these files are saved uh, in your documents and settings, and then you're going to go into your, your personal drive. My name's Jason Ward, so that's the drive I'm in. And then as you can see, this is a hidden folder, so you'd want to go into your tools, I believe, or now let me see, I believe it's Tools, View, and then you're going to want to have here where it says Show Hidden Files and Folders. That's how you're going to find this temp file. So you would just click there and then click Apply and OK. So now I'm going to go into the Application Data folder, and then into Ableton, and then into Live Recordings. And this decoding cache is where your files are going to be saved as you load them. So what I would recommend that you do is take this folder here and just copy it over to your other hard drive location that you choose. For me, what I did was I put a folder that I called Ableton Temp Folder on my hard drive. I put three zeros in front of it so that it's the first thing that shows up in the location that I put it alphabetically. And then I dragged the live recordings folder into here. Then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you hit the browse button and that you find the folder you want to put it in. And just for me it's this temp folder. And then it'll find the live recordings folder inside there. Then you're going to hit OK. Now that's going to save a lot of space on your C drive, believe me. The next thing is um, right here you have a minimum free space and a maximum free space. What that means is if your C drive starts to fill up and it gets less than this, this amount that you have set here, then Ableton is no longer going to decode your MP3s. So you're going to be stuck. So if you lower this number 
I think it might set it to 500 megabytes or it might set it to a one gigabyte or something like that that it'll expect you to have. You can lower this as low as you'd like. I've got mine at 200 megabytes. That seems to work fine for me. So definitely work with those settings. That's going to help you out quite a bit. The next thing is organizing your files. Um, many of you, and I highly recommend that you do this because it's a really great way to organize your songs, is um, many of you use iTunes, and I use iTunes myself. But the problem is that for someone that's trying to DJ, start DJing, you realize that all the songs you have in iTunes, you're going to need to warp those songs. And most of you don't have the time in the world to warp 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 songs. So my recommendation is that you choose, in each genre that you're going to play, choose, you know, 50 songs that you know you will use or the ones that you're using the most right now. And then as the weeks go on, you can start adding new tunes as you go and build your library. This does a couple things. For one, it saves you a whole lot of time of having to spend a month trying to warp all your songs. Second thing is it gets you more familiar with the songs you're using. And as you start using them in Ableton, you're going to find which songs work best together and which ones don't work at all. If your choices are over a thousand songs, it's going to be very difficult for you to get to the point of being familiar with which songs are working together. So I say start with a small group of songs and then build from there. And as your vocabulary builds, you're still going to retain all the information of how the other songs work together. So that's a recommendation of mine as well.